We are continuing to follow the disturbing story of two local firefighters that were stabbed last night. Now a man is awaiting his first appearance on battery charges. We've recently learned that the suspect's name is Tony Harris. Now the stabbing occurred last night along Boulevard Street. Now this is in the Springfield neighborhood. This is some video of the scene here. Both firefighters were taken to a local hospital with non life threatening injuries. Now Mayor Lenny Curry tweeted this morning saying in part quote praying for our first responders who put themselves in harm's way in quote. Right now we are awaiting a press conference where he will be speaking along with Chief Powers with JFRD. So we are watching and waiting for them to walk up there and take that podium. We understand it's supposed to start at 1201. So really any minute now we have not been given the names of the firefighters that were stabbed last night, uh, but we again we do know that they were taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries and from what we understand they did work at station two, which of course is near the downtown Springfield area. So we are awaiting this press conference really should be starting any moment now as they right here. Let's listen into the mayor. All right, hey, good afternoon. Uh, I got a call and it was brief last night uh, about a stabbing of our own personnel at Jacksonville Fire and Rescue. Uh, and uh, it uh, well, I can't use the words I'd like to use right now and that I wanted to use last night, but the idea that we have men and women that, that go out to protect us every day and they're in a situation where they're trying to save lives and take care of people and uh, frankly one of them has lost their life, another one got stabbed, it's just, it's outrageous and I'm going to be supportive of law enforcement uh, and prosecutors to make sure this person is prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. With that, I'll turn it over to our fire chief. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Last night around 10 o'clock, JFRD responded to 888 Franklin Street for a person suffering with back pain. While transporting that patient to UF Health uh, for evaluation, the patient became aggressive towards um, JFRD Captain LaTorrance Norris. The patient got up off the stretcher and lunged at Captain Norris, and during the ensuing, uh, ensuing struggle, the patient took a box cutter for, that Captain Norris had in his uh, front pocket and began to stab and cut Captain Norris. Those cuttings and stabbings occurred in the upper chest and the abdominal area. The engineer that was driving the rescue unit, uh, Vincent Harper, heard the commotion occurring and stopped the rescue unit quickly and got out and got in the back and jumped in to assist Captain Norris. And during the struggle to the, uh, restrain the patient, uh, engineer Harper sustained a pretty severe laceration to the inside of his thigh on his right leg. The two JFRD uh, firefighters continued struggling with the patient until JSO arrived and, and took over the situation. At about the same time, a UF Health security guard pulled up to the scene on a golf cart and made a quick decision to give Cap Norris a ride to the trauma center instead of waiting on additional JFRD units to arrive on scene. This decision was paramount in getting the rapid treatment that Cap Norris needed to save his life. Cap Norris arrived in the trauma center with a collapsed lung substantial blood loss, uh, which resulted in dangerously low blood pressure. Captain Norris is stabilized and has been admitted to the hospital for further treatment and evaluation. Had it not been for the selfless actions of Engineer Harper, the quick thinking of a security guard, and the incredible medical team at UF Health, this could have been a terrible outcome. Engineer Harper received treatment and was released early this morning. Captain Norris is in MICU in good condition and doing much better this afternoon. He should be moving to a regular room later on today. I want to personally thank everyone for their thoughts and prayers for Captain Norris and Engineer Harper. I also want to thank the security guard and the medical staff at UF Health for their quick and professional actions that helped save the life of a JFRD firefighter last night. As firefighters, we always say we'll lay down our lives for others and last night, JFRD engineer Harper proved that by throwing himself into harm's way in order to stop the attack on Captain Norris. So Vinny, thank you for your heroic act. Your actions undoubtedly prevented a bad situation from becoming a tragedy. I'll close with this and to reiterate what the mayor said. JFRD will work with JSO and the state attorney to seek the maximum punishment permissible for the person that committed this crime or anyone else who decides to attack a first responder. 
And now we'll take any questions you have. Chief, this guy has a record, and is there any reason why he went and did what he did inside a rescue unit? So we're not going to speak to anything related to the investigation. That's J JSO's responsibility. Um, he had a medical need last night, and as we always do, we transport people with, with medical needs to the hospital. Is there a hard reason for the Navy to use the protocol to better protect crews should they find themselves in a situation like this? This was, this was an unusual situation because um, the patient was very calm. There was no issues going on, nothing. It just, uh, out, out of the blue, it, it intensified in the back of the rescue very quickly. So there's really not a lot. If we have a patient that, that is being aggressive or, or um, you know, that we may need help with, we take more riders with us. We already do that as a policy. But in this situation, there wasn't any sign, any sign of that when, we, uh, when the crew left to go to the hospital. No, no, ma'am. Are there any circumstances where firefighters would ever be allowed to drink seizures to protect themselves had, you know, they had not been in the fire yet? No, ma'am, that's, 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 not, that's not possible. We rely on JSO. We work together with them hand in hand. And if we need them, they, they were very quick to arrive on scene last night and assist with that. And if we need them, they'll, they'll be there at a moment's notice. So what about bulletproof vest sets many other fire departments are doing in major cities when their folks go out? So currently the mayor about a year ago provided the funding for, uh, for bulletproof vests for all JFRD riding positions. We have them, um, but in this case there was, you know, it's, it's the crew, we leave it to the crew's choice on whether they deem the situation to be a, a bad situation. They should be wearing that vest. And last night it just didn't appear that that was gonna be needed. Uh, and, and Doc can speak, uh, Doc Elias, our medical director, can speak more to the medical side of this, but I will say that it, had it not been for those quick actions and uh, that thought that that security guard had that we would be facing uh, a way different outcome this morning. This was, this was a bad situation that uh, that security guard's quick actions and, and the actions of that medical team that work in the trauma center at UF Health, they saved a Jacksonville firefighter last night. Any reason to believe it was retaliation? I'm, I'm sorry? I, yeah, I have I have no idea. Um, Captain Norris has been employed since uh, July 8th of 2006, and Engineer Hart employed since February the 7th of Firefighters are resilient. You know, it's just it's just the way we operate. It's our it's our in our nature. But obviously, uh, the last three months have been extremely. You know, we've had some extreme trying situations. But uh, as as the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department has always done, they just bounce back and continue to serve, do what they love to do, and that's serve the public. There you just heard from the Chief of Jacksonville Fire Rescue Department along with uh, Mayor Lenny Curry. He started that press conference, but uh, the fire chief explained that last night on Franklin Street, the crew was responding to a call for a person with back pain, what seemed like a normal call, but uh, while they were riding to the hospital, that person became violent. They're saying that he grabbed a box cutter and began uh, uh, stabbing and cutting Captain uh, Norris in the back, and that's when the driver engineer Vincent Harper. He heard the commotion in the back. He stopped and then he tried to to help Captain Norris, who was being attacked. And in the process, engineer Harper sustained a laceration to his uh, right leg. Now they said that they were at UF Health when a security guard pulled up to the ambulance, saw the severe injuries that Captain Norris had and actually took him into the trauma center. And those quick actions likely saved his life, saying that Captain Norris had a collapsed lung as well as significant 
significant blood loss at that point, but he is expected to be OK. They're saying he's still at the hospital. Engineer Harper has since been released, but JFRD and the mayor are both saying there that they will seek the maximum penalty for this person uh, that attacked a, a JFRD as they were just trying to do their job. They did mention there that they do have bulletproof vests, but they leave it up to the discretion of the crews. And you heard the chief say that they didn't feel that this was uh, an unsafe situation until suddenly it took a turn.